What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So this week's video will be helpful to all of you no matter what your grass type, cool season or warm season, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you should be doing in your lawn right now as we're officially into fall and October is starting next week. Now I'm gonna start with you cool season friends and I'm gonna overlay some mowing video just to keep things interesting. And for all of you that are watching, I'll put timestamps here, here and here. And I'm gonna talk through these growth calendars because each of our grass types grows a little bit differently. Cool season and warm season, that way you can get right to the part of the video that makes the most sense for you. Of course, I'm always of the hope that all of you will watch the entire video because that's what makes it fun. Also, if you're new here, let me just say, I realize that I talk fast. I do that on purpose so you don't have to sit through a full 30 minute video. You can sit through one that's like seven minutes because that's how fast I talk. But I did wanna let you know if you want more content, I have a free newsletter. Just click the link in the description below. I send out an email every single week that's very similar to this video. It tells you exactly what to do in your lawn right now this week and I think it'd be really helpful to you and it's free content that'll definitely help you out. So click the link in the description below and sign up for my free email today. By the way, I think I have a mole. I've seen these blowouts here twice now. This is a big blowout right here. I mean, this could only be some sort of an animal, right? That's working its way out. It's definitely gotta be a mole, right? You stick your finger down in there. But it seems if I'm looking closely, I feel like I can see a track that goes here and right there, right? And where's the other blowout? Yeah, it's down there, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm wrong. It's tough with St. Augustine grass too to feel like, you know, like in Kentucky bluegrass, you can stomp the, the, tra the tunnels flat and kind of see what's going on. But St. Augustine, especially this Pro Vista, it's so thick, it's hard to really feel what's going on. So I'm hoping I can just get lucky. So, pretty crazy, right? Cool season folks will start with you and if you have not seeded your lawn this fall time then your job right now is to pack in the pounds of nitrogen. Reference this growth chart right here. You see that push there in the fall? That's a second growth period for cool season lawns where they can really pack on the pounds. You want to put that lawn in a bulking cycle. Fertilize the lawn every four weeks and get down a good three quarter pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. If you don't know what all that means, just throw down furt every four weeks and you'll be good all the way until the ground freezes. Get some malorganite or other organic and go out there and hit it every four weeks. Now if you're a real cowboy or cowgirl, Carbon X 2404 is your American Pharaoh. And this is what I'm going to be throwing down here in another few days, well actually Tuesday, when my Florida blackout period ends. I also recommend fall pre-emergence for you once again if you have not seeded. Perfect soil temps for pre-emergent are right around that 70 degrees Fahrenheit or falling to that point. I'll link the Greencast tool below where you can pick up some more information on soil temps. It's okay to be a little early by a couple weeks. The application rate of four pounds per thousand will take you all the way to December, which for most of you with cool season lawns, that's plenty of coverage. Now there are also tons of questions I'm getting coming in pertaining to aeration and overseed, especially in regards to your seed. Those of you who seeded a couple, two, three weeks ago, I've been doing all kinds of podcasts, kind of going through all the different strategies, all the different scenarios, answering all the different questions that I've been getting from all of the places where I kind of listen online and see what's going on. And I break those down in the podcast because that's the easiest way to just answer a bunch of questions quick. I'm gonna link in the description below to the different podcasts and what questions they answer because it'll help you for sure if you're somebody that's just seeded and you're wondering about aftercare everything from mowing to watering to my seed isn't coming up to what do I do coming up after that 30 35 day mark after my seeding what do I do next and for sure one of the questions I'm getting the most is right now people are saying okay Alan I did I seeded it's been like 35 days or so I've mowed a couple times can I go ahead and spray weeds in my new grow and the answer is in a lot of cases yes you can spray weeds but I would caution you against it one of the primary weed controls I recommended a lot of my strategies for cool season lawns is tenacity which the active ingredient there is mesotron now, one of the nice things about tenacity is you can use that at the time of overseeding. You can put that down and it will act like a pre-emergent and will help keep some weeds out of your grow. It's not something I typically recommend because it adds a whole nother level of difficulty, but it's also not something I'm against because it is an excellent add-on to hedge your bet. However, people get confused and think they can throw tenacity down anytime during the seeding and that is not the case. Let's read the label. Apply at grass seeding or close to seeding for best performance. Avoid spraying on newly germinated turf grass plants. Wait until the newly germinated turf has been mowed two times or four weeks 
after emergence, whichever is longer, before making a post-emergence application. So you can see that plainly it says you gotta put the tenacity down really close to the time of seeding, but once it's germinated, you need to wait 30 days or two mowings, whichever is longer. The thing about that is, let's just think logically through it. If you wait the 30 days, does that mean that on day 31 something magical happens to your brand new grass and it's not gonna feel any effects from the tenacity at all as opposed to two days earlier on day 29 it would have? No, that's not the case. Look at it this way. When you apply a weed control to green plants, there's always harm done. You just may not see it and that's why we use certain weed controls in our grass because the chemical won't cause any visible damage to our grass or to our crop, but it doesn't mean there's no damage there at all. Think about when you go to work with a headache. Most people during the day wouldn't know you had a headache, but you knew and you knew it affected your productivity and it certainly wasn't a good day at work. So why give your brand new grass a headache and give it a bad day at work? Instead, let's let it grow, let's let it run and let's push it with furt and let's let winter take care of most of the weed problems. Now listen, I understand some of you, you do have to spray. I get it, I'm there. And if you do have to spray it all, go get one of those ready to use formulations. It's like a gallon of stuff, it's ready to go. Just spray that, just do a little spot spraying if that'll make you feel better. But definitely no blanket apps of any kind of weed control at all. Let your new grass run and let it run headache free. Next, for those of you with successful seedings that are coming up on that day 35 mark or so, feel free to start pushing your lawn hard with nitrogen as well. Three quarter pounds of nitrogen per thousand all the way until winter is just fine. And for real though, if you're somebody that's even a little bit into lawn care, please check out my podcast. I'll give you a couple links below. I promise you that I explain lawn care in a way that is very different than you've ever heard before. And what that'll do is it'll help open up windows of understanding to you. It'll help you do better in your lawn care overall. I know it sounds a little bit weird to some of you. Check out the podcast and listen to how I go through it. And I promise you, it'll help you. Now for my warm season friends, that's those of us with Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine, Centipede, or Bahia grass. We are slowing down and we're slowing down quickly. Check out our graphic here. You can see that our growth pattern is definitely checking out quickly. I mentioned this in my recent podcast, which is linked below for you. 17 minutes of me complaining about the fact that my lawn just isn't growing as fast as it was. And we're still in the high 80s here, but the temperature swings, lack of rain and humidity have really told the grass to slow itself down. And it's a little bit frustrating. Truth be told though, we have two jobs right now. Number one, keep irrigating. The more you continue to irrigate deeply and infrequently, your lawn will not go as dormant as fast as everyone around you. <laughs> Okay, so this is super interesting and I hope this will come out okay, but I came over here to the common area because all the lawns we look at in my neighborhood and that, those are all well irrigated. It's just a thing everybody does here. So I want to come out to the common areas to show you what poor irrigation does. Now, why are you talking? Now, I don't think this area here is irrigated. What's interesting is it stays green where the trees are shading the lawn through most of the day. So I'll point it out to you from far back. I, I think the shadows are gonna keep you from seeing it. But the lawn is, it's definitely stressed. Let's just show you that. So even in the parts of the lawn that look good, it's definitely stressed. It's got all this sloughing in here that you can see, as well as it's just not been irrigated enough. So this is definitely an area that didn't get enough irrigation for sure. However, what's interesting is this actually looks fairly green and the area that it looks fairly green is, is right along here. See this oak right here? It's a beautiful oak tree. The shadow that it's casting right now is actually where this lawn is the greenest. And where it's not having a shadow cast is where the lawn is definitely droughted out even worse. So check this out. And by the way, I wouldn't make this assumption if it was just one tree, but I've got a lot of examples all the way down through here. I'll show you, every one is the same. So you can kind of see it's greener, greener, right? And as we get out to where this shadow stops, now it's about 10 in the morning right now, all of a sudden we're completely droughted out because this spot here is getting direct sun all day. That tree's too small. So all day it just nails it and it's droughted out. Look at that. This is, now this is not dead. It still feels malleable because we're just on the beginning of a dry spell. We've been about seven days with no rain. So it's gonna start really checking out now though. This is actually a uh, torpedo grass right here. That's torpedo grass. Common areas also get it. So we'll go over here into the shade of this oak and you can see this little patch right here that is currently in the shade is looking good. Not perfect, but good. And then you come out here to where the shadow ends and all of a sudden it's completely droughted out again, just like the other area. And you can see that all the way down. So this is a perfect example of how you can look at common areas around you 
and understand how they're reacting and then look at your lawn and see if you see anything similar or different using the environment around you and areas where you can see a pattern there's so many trees here and everyone has this exact same pattern i can 100 percent say that, that this is unirrigated but the shade is helping the grass during this little you know dry spell we've had what's the sign well it needs water that's the sign. Next, get down to your final fertilizer app of the year. Sometime here soon, soil temps falling to 70 degrees Fahrenheit is a good target, but really for most of you, any time now is fine for your last application. Pre-emergents are also highly recommended coming up here soon for most of you. I have a blog post link below that'll give you the exact timing you need to get your pre-emergent down to prevent those fall and winter germinating weeds. I hope this will be okay in the wind. I wanted to take you back by this house. If you'll remember from several months ago, in the late spring, we had a drought, literal for like several weeks, no rain, and we had a lot of lawns that died out for people that couldn't get the irrigation right. This one here was one of the examples I used. Let me show you how it looks now. This is the power of St. Augustine just coming back from the rainy season. It's not like anything special was done here, no resodding. So here's this other one. This one was really badly damaged. You can see it's still got some damage, but you can see the St. Aug is already starting to green up right in the middle of the spots there. Looks like they had a fence installed. It's pretty much fully recovered. Now I'm not gonna go up in there and see what, what actually grew back in, but you can see it looks much better. It looks to me like Bermuda may have come back into the thin spots, but it's turf. So instead of being a lesson in how awesome St. Aug is and coming back from a drought, it's actually a lesson in how awesome wild Bermuda is at exploiting a weak spot. I can't say for sure on this one, but it looks like something was dumped there or used on the sidewalk that bled over or sprayed out. It's just weird. Definitely chemical though. Look at all this illegal pressure washing going on up here. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I hope this has been helpful to you. And I want to give a couple shout outs here. And the first one is to Dennis Bullock of Evergreen Cottage. I'm going to link his channel in the description below. He's got a lot of really cool content on lawns, landscapes, trees and shrubs, and all kinds of things over there. I really like to support my fellow content creators. So go give him a subscribe. Again, I'll link his channel in the description below. Secondly, I'd like to shout out to my friend Mike, Real Low Dad. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, bro. He's coming over to hang out here at LCNHQ and have a little bit of fun. And then lastly, a shout out to John Perry. It was great to see you this week. That's what the footage is behind here. John and I were able to go out a little offshore and go after some pelagics this week out in the Gulf of Mexico. Had a great time and I was actually able to land my first ever spinner shark and this was quite a fight. John, thanks for filming that for me. I really appreciate it. For all those that you that want to know, yes, we kept all the Spanish mackerel and the kingfish, but we did let the shark go. We didn't hurt it or anything like that. It's just fun to have a battle like that. So with that, I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn.